Mandalorian Chapter 5 or Episode 5 Season 1 was directed and written by Dave Filoni and it took us back to a place we have not been to in a very, very long time and that is Tatooine. And it was interesting because if y'all remember when the first ever Force Awakens trailers had come out and teasers when we saw the sand planet you know in the very first teaser in the early stuff we thought it was Tatooine like okay we're back on Tatooine again turned out to be Jakku so this was the first time in the sequel trilogy the post Return of the Jedi time period that we're seeing Tatooine and seeing what happened you know this episode took us back there and not only did we see Tatooine but we also saw sand people Tusken Raiders and they even had those little robots from from the prequels that whole hit the nose whatever they're called they were also in here this episode took the mandalorian to tatooine what ends up happening is he gets involved uh in a space battle with another bounty hunter the ship ends up getting damaged and so he has to go to the nearest planet and it winds up being tatooine which again it's one of those what a coincidence and people are going to say it makes the star wars universe seem small and in some ways it does and i will be honest with you the space fight at the beginning of the episode was really not one that I felt was that great. The CGI looked, let's just say it looked like a TV series from like the 90s. It didn't really look like a modern Star Wars, you know, like a Rogue One or Solo or even the sequel trilogy. And obviously those have bigger budgets, but this space sequence was very short and just didn't really feel right. But again, you know, I'm not going to criticize it too much. The episode itself took the Mandalorian to Tatooine for repairs. And we end up meeting this new, um, sort of this wannabe bounty hunter named Toro Calican or something like that. And he is a guy who, um, uh, he wants to be a bounty hunter. He's a wannabe. Like I said, he wants to be in the guild. So he goes on this, uh, you know, mission with the Mandalorian to try and capture another mercenary bounty hunter. And it winds up being one of those things where, you know, the Mandalorian is trying to uh, bring her back alive, but she's very, uh, what's the word, manipulative, you you know, without getting too deep into it, even though I, I don't really worry about spoiling the show in these subsequent reviews. I think most of you guys have already seen it, but if you haven't, definitely see it. Um... But essentially, it just shows kind of like how this dude is young and kind of easily manipulated, whereas Mando is clearly more experienced. As they go out and do these missions, you know, or do this mission, they go out into the, you know, the the, the dunes of Tatooine. You know, we, you know, they even mention Beggar's Canyon, you know, which is something that we see in A New Hope. And, you know, a lot of real, a lot of nostalgia in this episode, which is something that Mandalorian has not really done too much of. In previous episodes, with the exception of the obvious, you know, Mandalorian armor, which is supposed to be a throwback to Boba Fett. Um, But of course, the Mandalorian story has expounded so much since the original Empire Strikes Back. uh, And of course, the original Star Wars trilogy, where we saw a lot of Boba Fett. So now the Mandalorians have a whole new backstory that wasn't even, we didn't even know about it when the movie was around back in those days. And uh, obviously, we know more now, but uh, besides that, there hasn't been a lot of playing on people's nostalgia for this franchise, or for, I'm sorry, for this uh, series. For the franchise, that's all it's been. Rogue One, Solo, and the sequel trilogy have all been throwbacks to the old trilogy, whereas um, this is our first real sort of uh, throwback to the old trilogy in Mandalorian, because I feel like the stuff that we've seen recently isn't too much of that. Then again, there is, of course, Baby Yoda, who is absolutely adorable yet again, and his cuteness level, or her cuteness level, because we don't know what gender Baby Yoda is, is so off the hook in this episode. Um, And then we find out that because of the Mandalorian's decision, um, and of course the bounty hunter, they have to go find the mercenary, she knows about the child and the value, but because of the Mandalorian's decision to take the child he is now the bounty so the bounty hunter becomes the bounty so what we have going on here is this situation where we have a bounty hunter dealing with other bounty hunters trying to go after him which i think is really really clever and uh, a good way to kind of blast off season one's main storyline now what was interesting is you know the episode ends with the mandalorian you know escaping the planet or leaving it with the the baby yoda but there is a cliffhanger because somebody finds the uh, the the body 
of the mercenary and all you see is their shoes and that's essentially the uh, cliffhanger I guess for the episode so now we're going to have a continuing arc as I presume that the man that Mando is going to keep getting chased down so this episode in my opinion I felt was a good episode they haven't made any bad episodes of this series yet but this one was a bit of a step down I think they focused a bit too much on nostalgia and the beginning of it seemed to be a little you know drawn out a bit but I still liked it. It's not that I don't like it. I feel like it's not as good as episode three or episode four. Um, You know, but not every episode when it comes to a TV series is going to be a smash hit. Like, it's just really hard to have every single episode be good. There's very few number of TV shows that can accomplish that. And Dave Filoni is a very talented writer and an improving director. So we're going to see a lot more from him. But I still really like this episode. Don't get me wrong. I just felt like the previous ones were more interesting. But uh, we have three more episodes to go from what I understand. I think we have three more to go for season one. And then season one is over. But they've already, I believe they're already almost done with season two. So that shouldn't even take that long to get here. Then we'll get more stories of the Mandalorian and see where the story goes. I, I do wonder if the Baby Yoda arc, the the child so to speak, if that's going to get resolved this season or if they're going to move on. There's all kinds of rumors about possibly Snoke being in this series at one point or another, or more of the First Order people being involved. Maybe Hux could be here. I really don't know, but we'll see when we get there. Anyways, thumbs up episode again. Let me know what you think in the comments. Mandalorian Chapter 5. I liked it a lot, and I look forward to seeing where else they go in the galaxy. So, yeah, so far, Mandalorian is my favorite piece of... Disney Star Wars every when it comes to like the stuff they've put out during the Disney regime this is my favorite like you know product like TV or movie it's this one so thanks again talk to you soon